to another episode of A Message of Hope. I am your host, Christina Lockett. Today in the studio, we have with us Christina Porter. She is the project coordinator of the Chauncey Glover Project. Please welcome her to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to talk with you. I just love the energy that you have when you walk into the studio. You was ready. <laughs> All right. set. Yes, yeah. yes. So talk about your position um, in the organization. Okay. Well, um, I am the project coordinator for the Chauncey Glover Project, which is a 501c3 mentoring organization for okay. at-risk males of color. Uh, so my job is, well, what don't I do? I kind of do a little bit of everything. Okay. You know, um, I work alongside Chauncey Glover who is the the founder and director of the program okay he's also an anchor for ABC 13 and created the program when um, he was out on a story working in Detroit about mm -hmm. five years ago uh, there was a, a young man and well actually two young men who had allegedly tried to rob the school's basketball coach and so wow. he was sent on the scene to to cover the story because the coach actually shot both of the young men who mm. tried to rob him. Mm -hmm. And so um, they had found one young man and the other one was missing. So when Chauncey arrived on scene, he was getting ready to you know, go live on his shot and stumbled upon the other young man that was missing. And he was laying kind of in the middle of the median you know, with the gunshot wound mm. to his chest and uh, was basically kind of you know, dying right in front of him. And so, wow. um, you know, just that whole experience kind of prompted him to uh, go back into that young man's school and you know he wanted to see how can we prevent things like this from happening again so yes. he went back to that young man's school and and um, you know asked the principal you know who are these young men's friends mm -hmm. and so they he basically took all the friends of, of theirs and and mentored them that's wonderful and, um, you know called them the fearless 14 okay. and and that's how the Chauncey Glover project was birthed wow and so um, now he's uh, located in Houston as mm -hmm. an anchor and reporter for Channel 13, and so we've um, brought the project here to Houston for the second year now. Okay. So um, my job, uh, basically as project coordinator, is I make sure, I coordinate everything. I make sure the boys are where they need to be, the parents have the right information. You know, I do kind of all the administrative tasks you know, sending text messages, emails, okay. writing recommendation letters, making sure we have a space to meet in, making okay. sure we have food to eat, mm -hmm. you know, making sure the agenda is ready for whatever we're going to be doing that yes. weekend yes. or, you know, anything like that. So yes. um, I'm working alongside Chauncey daily because he likes to have his hand in everything That's good. that goes on. So um, he's definitely a present force within the organization and you know he's more than just the name yes so he's you know he's working and he's giving rides and we're making sure that you know we have everything in place yes. for the boys yes so. well you know what I know that you work again as a project coordinator and just as you say that you, you take care of a lot of day-to-day -day, the mm -hmm. business but talk about it from a personal standpoint how um, do you see it uh, helping the boys the young men absolutely. and just your personal connection to it yeah, absolutely because you know um, Personally, you know, my career by choice is an educator. Okay. Uh, so I'm a school counselor. Okay. So there's um, one of my uh, students who I've been with for the last three years because, you know, the way that, you know, our program works in my school is, um, you know, I get the students in sixth grade and then I follow them all the way through middle school okay. and send them on to high school. So I have one student that has I've known since the sixth grade, mm -hmm. watched his challenges, and when he was in the seventh grade, um, you know, the program was already in its first year. I kind of wanted to introduce him to Chauncey because I wanted him to, I saw something that, you know, needed to be tweaked. I felt like he needed, you know, the good presence and the role modeling from Chauncey, and so I went, I introduced him to Chauncey just by chance because mm -hmm. I was, you know, working with another program for high school students, and we were visiting the TV station that day, just so happened. Okay. So I am invited him to come out to the TV station mm -hmm. with me and that group of kids so that he could meet Chauncey. Okay. And so um, something about that that meeting um, sparked, you know, something in Chauncey to say, you know what, he needs to be in our program next year. Yes. And so um, that's basically what happened. And so for the last year, I, we've been mentoring him. He's mm -hmm. got a personal mentor. He's been learning from Chauncey. And then, of course, you know, our connection at school has been a little bit different as well. You know, because I get 
I always try to get to know all of my students, the mm -hmm. ones that I work at school with and then the ones that I work with in the Chauncey Glover Project. So I yes. see the changes that, you know, it makes mm -hmm. with them. You know, I got to see firsthand the changes that happened with him within the classroom. That's you know, good. being able to see him every day, mm -hmm. being able to, to think through some of the, the choices that he was making. Yes. And, you know, even his interactions with teachers and, mm -hmm. you know, even some of his, you know, his daily struggles and even struggles with his family, mm -hmm. you know, with his father. Mm -hmm. you know things like that so that you know is the personal connection that I really do like you know I love when you know the boys always keep in contact with me okay. even the ones that we've graduated you know they still let me know what's going on That's I have good. one uh, at Texas A&M who will call every week when he had a test okay you know because he's okay. studying engineering at Texas A&M so he would call to say how the test went mm -hmm. and you know that accountability the, mm -hmm. checkpoint yes you know everyone needs that they do they do, they do. need that mm -hmm. um I'm an educator as well I teach math and science and I remember an incident of having one student and I noticed a big shift in his life and he didn't share what was going on personally mm -hmm. but I noticed a shift and I was like okay I have to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And I remember him always talking about the fact that he wanted to be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. He's like, when I grow up, I want to be a firefighter. And so um, my classmate, my high school classmate, um, he's a firefighter. He's actually kind of went up the ranks. Mm -hmm. And I called him. And within a couple of days, he was able to take off work and mm -hmm. come and meet with uh, my yeah. student. Mm -hmm. the, um, the administrative uh, team put that together. They allowed him to come in and meet and he forever changed and that was just one meeting right that wasn't a mentorship program mm -hmm. where he was able to talk with him touch it was right. one meeting mm -hmm. that one time talking to him one-on-one -on -one, yeah put him right back on the track mm -hmm. you know so i can only imagine what a mentoring program right. would do yeah and then like what you said well, as a counselor you're working with the students daily you know, you don't always have those resources to say, mm -hmm. I have this type of program. Right. What What about the students that don't have a program like this? You right. know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, and there's so many. You know, it was so many of my students that would be like, oh, you need to be a CGP. You need to be a CGP. <laughs> you know, and even, even that student would say those things. He was like, you know, I think they should be a you know, <laughs> CGP. And then, you know, he would kind of struggle with calling me Miss Porter versus calling me Miss Chrissy, which is what the boys call me. Okay, so, okay. So, uh, you know, he would say, Miss Chrissy, I'm like, what did you call me? You know? <laughs> uh, so, but it's, you know, it's a good, because we, we become a family. Amen. You know, Amen. so, you know, we're picking the boys up. You know, they're asking because they need rides. And, mm -hmm. you know, they don't always have transportation or, mm -hmm. you know, Miss Chrissy, I need a recommendation letter. You mm -hmm. know, I'm always sending out scholarship information to the seniors so that they can, you know, apply for these scholarships. And, you know, I did a big old uh, presentation on how to apply for scholarships, That's what good. to do, you know, how to write your, you know, we work big time on writing their essays. Chauncey helped write a lot of their essays, you know, so they could have a good essay to submit for these scholarship applications because, you know, they all want to go to school. They want want to to seek that higher yes. you know thing yes. but they don't always have the means to and we know you know college is expensive it it's is not cheap and not everybody you know needs to be having loans or may qualify for grants and yes. things of that nature so yes. we have to equip them with the tools that they need so that they can be successful and and move forth in this society so that's you know that's the personal part for me that's the, that's good. the part that I really enjoy well, in addition to education, obviously that's one of your pushes with the mm -hmm. program. What are some of the other core values? Uh, some of the, uh, you know, they're they're learning the the ideals of manhood, the principles of success. So, you know, they're they're learning how to dress for success. That's good. How to tie a tie. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the little things that you know some of us may take for granted that they just don't have the knowledge about. You know, we teach them about etiquette. You know, that's good. Handshake, public speaking. Chauncey does a big thing on public speaking and, and preparing them to be able to speak in front of people. That's Good. You know, and to meet people for the first time, and to network, and to that's you know, good. You know, things. Now, if you can learn that at an early age, that's Absolutely. powerful. Yes, and it's it's very fun to see them uh, put those skills to use. <laughs> you know, we did a um over the summer we did a police interaction training. Wow, mm -hmm. talk did, about that with, um, with Constable Alan Rosen. He was um you know he's a close friend of, of Chauncey, and so uh, we brought in uh, the constable and we brought in all white deputies. Impossible. Mm. So uh, to come in and they had a candid discussion about, you know, the boys' views versus the police views mm -hmm. and, and they talked and it was, you know, there were moments where it seemed like it was very tense, mm -hmm. but by the end of the 
the afternoon, mm -hmm. they were, you know, talking about video games and, <laughs> and laughing and joking, yes. you know, helping them tie ties. I mean, mm -hmm. they were, you know, they really connected and bonded yes. in that experience. And so that was a very, that very sounds like a powerful experience. moment. Absolutely. You know, from both standpoints, Absolutely. from the young men and mm -hmm. from the yeah, deputies. It was wow. very eye opening, I think, for both sides. Mm -hmm. And so for them to be able to connect mm -hmm. like that was, was very powerful. And, you know, by the end of it, you know, you had some getting signed up so that they can go, you know, the constables were taking them to go get their driver's permit, you know. Wow. So it was very, very good. good so moment. do you find that um, the community has embraced the program? Absolutely. You know, um, Chauncey has his fans, you know, through uh, what he does within the community. And so uh, when people find out about it, everybody wants to find a piece of it. I think mm -hmm. once they figure out what it's about, mm -hmm. then everybody wants a little piece of it because they're like, oh my goodness, this program is so amazing. And mm -hmm. it is an amazing mm -hmm. program. And so we really hope that, you know, the world could see the amazing things that the Chauncey Glover Project does. And, you know, if we could have chapters all over the country, we would, you know. Yes. If we had the yes. resources and means to do so, if we could, you know, start a school or something, we yes. absolutely would, would do that. That would definitely be, you know, a dream to to do because it's something that's needed. It's needed. Mm -hmm. It's needed. And when you work in education or if you just work around children, mm -hmm. you can see that it's needed. Absolutely. Especially in this season. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, in years past, probably when I was growing up, um, God spared my life. I'll be 41 this year. Um, fathers were more prevalent. Mm -hmm. You know, like my parents are still married. They'll be married uh, going on 54 years. Mm -hmm. um, and just having that father figure in the home that was the norm. Right. It was it wasn't a lot of single parents. Mm -hmm. I mean of course we had some, but that wasn't the norm. Like right. now it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, all right. homes are almost mm -hmm. single parents. Pretty much. You know, it's 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 changed. The mm -hmm. dynamics has changed and um even just some of the issues that um children are facing you know, even as an adult, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe that they're experiencing this. Right. Yeah. You know, um, when children begin to share some things with you, you're like, I can't believe it. And mm -hmm. then when you just see it in the community, it's like there is a need yeah. for a program Absolutely. like yours. Um, they need the guidance. They mm -hmm. need the structure. They need someone just to talk to. Yeah, because they know? all have a story. Every last one yes. of them has a story, you know, whether it, you know, whether it's something that we think is, is small, mm -hmm. you know, we all cope differently. Yes. We all have different sets of coping skills. And so, you know, just to be able to teach them to manage those things and to, to go out into the world because, mm -hmm. you know, they have to know that the world is so much bigger than, you know, than their small community. Yes. You know, yes. I remember last year uh, we were preparing for um, our end of the year gala and I was, you know, we were in the car, you know, driving to, to the the theater, which was all the way on the other side of town from Fifth Ward. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they were so, we just had this conversation in the car because they were so amazed that there was so much more to the city of Houston than what. I've had that experience. No. Mm -hmm. I've had that experience on a field trip. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, we could have just took a field trip riding around the city. Right. You know, yeah. the kids were like, oh, I didn't know that building. Mm -hmm. What is that? Well, you know, people, yeah. I think. If we've been exposed, we have exposure, we don't understand that children who who do not have that exposure, mm -hmm. the difference it makes in their life. It really Just does. going outside of their vicinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm against schools that go, that don't have field trips. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the budgets, you know, yeah. they, they cut out a lot of field trips. Mm -hmm. But, like, they, the children need that exposure. They do. They need to see that the world is so much bigger than, you know, yes. what their eyes can see, you know, right there within their neighborhoods. And so that's what, you know, the Chauncey Glover program is about. And, um, you know, even we prepare them for college. Yes. You know, we do a big thing on making sure that they're prepared to go to college, that they, you know, take the ACT, because I'm against. I don't, I'm not, not an SAT person. <laughs> uh, you know, I try to steer them to the ACT just because I know that they're going to, it's going to be better for them. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, so uh, we try to teach them those little things so that they can, you know, get out and propel out of their circumstances. Yes. And, and most of them, that's all they want to do is they're just looking for a way out. Mm -hmm. You know, they want it so bad, but they just don't know how to get there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, you know, one thing that I, I promote here with the message of hope is uh, I always encourage someone if you you have a youth in your neighborhood if you know a single mother um, in your church 
to help out. Mm -hmm. You know, share a kind word, mm -hmm. share words of encouragement. Um, perhaps you know you you may not be able to do a full blown out mentorship right, program, right. but everyone can make a difference yeah. in a child's life. Just you just ask them what what did you get on your report card? Mm -hmm. Just to know for a child to know that you care enough to ask them mm -hmm. that makes a difference. Yes. Because you know what, maybe next time I do a little better. So when you ask me, I can say, oh, I got some A's and B's this yes, time. You yes, know, yes. Um, and I'm not trying to make light of it. I just want everyone to realize that you can make a difference. Absolutely, you all can it make takes a is a little encouragement. Everybody needs an encouraging word. And yes. sometimes they need to hear from somebody other than the people who are right around them all yes. the time. Yes. And sometimes they don't hear that and sometimes they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the whole goal is to, to make sure that they are believing in themselves so that they can achieve. Yes, well, um, I know that you have an upcoming event, so I would love for you to share about your upcoming event. Yes, okay, so every year at the end of our mentoring session, we have a Black Tie Gala, and um, it's not your typical sit down, eat chicken type of affair. <laughs> uh, you know, we go to those all the time, so, you know, uh, Chauncey wanted to do something a little different. He okay. wanted to make sure that, you know, it was all about, because it's a, it's a fundraising event mm -hmm. uh, to, to get scholarships for the young men who are going off to college and to you know to get funding so that we can continue to do the great things that we do within the program uh, so the gala is a theater style performance it oh, is wow. a show okay and the show is starring our young men oh that's really good yes yeah, so our young men they put they have this wonderful show prepared um, it will be on uh, Friday June 22nd at the Hobby Center in Zilka Hall and it, it starts at 7 p.m. and our young men will hit the stage. We have about 40 of them. And they will, um, the theme is there is, is a king in me. Mm -hmm. And they will show you how they have triumphed out of their trials and tribulations and taking charge of their destinies and share, basically share with the world their stories. Amen. And so they, they each will have individual monologues and they will share that they will share the stage and get on stage and, and tell the world. Last year there um there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I can imagine. You know, um, you know, so we have, you know, students who have stories from, you know, that will just wow you, you know, from a, a young man who when he started the school year he was, you know, homeless with his siblings and his mother and they were sleeping on a park bench mm -hmm. and you know looking for food to eat you know this is the same one when when we're eating you know when we're with them and you know I said you know I'll go get you a fork he say oh no Miss Chrissy I'm I'm good mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've had worse than this so mm -hmm. I, I can take care of this is good for me so I'm Jesus. thankful for this you know so he, you know gentlemen like him are gonna hit the stage you know so you know just stories that are going to really inspire you and um, maybe tug at your heartstrings a little bit but they're true they're their stories you yes. know and and this is our moment to to help empower them so that they can you know share their stories with the world and show that you know they can embrace the king in them and you know become the gentleman we have try to help them be you know be and empower them so we're excited about it our host for the evening is going to be uh, mr kendrick sampson who you may have seen on uh, season two of how to get away with murder mm -hmm. and he's a, a, a houston native from missouri city so okay. he will be coming in to to host our event and um help encourage our young men as they uh, move forward in the next stage in their lives and we want everybody to to please come out and support the event it's all about you know our young men who are going to take the stage and you know you know please just support them empower them and encourage them this is the way that you can do that excellent excellent mm -hmm. so just in case someone um watches the rebroadcast mm -hmm. how can they support the project so um by coming to the gala you can purchase your tickets at the hobby center website we do have an event page it's on uh, www.hobbycenter.org uh, for those who uh, would like to support the project and you can't attend the gala um, we're launching our new website okay. uh, www.thechaunceygloverproject.org uh, that will be uh, launched uh, just a couple of days before the gala so we're kind of really excited like about that it's been revamped and we're ready and um, there will be a link to be able to donate you can also donate uh, via PayPal, uh, paypal.me slash the CG Project Houston uh, is how you can donate to our PayPal charity link. So we're really excited and uh, we hope the city will continue to embrace us. Yes. And um, so we can keep doing this great work. 
I'm excited about this work. You know, I, I love mentorship programs. Um, while I was working for one middle school, we actually had more than one mentorship program, mm -hmm. one for the um, young men and one for the young ladies. Mm -hmm. And literally, I just saw the transformation. Yeah. And when you see the transformation, you see the impact that it's making on the students, just on our youth, mm -hmm. you will want to support people who do that. Absolutely. You know, yeah. um, sometimes as a teacher, you're limited. Mm -hmm. It's only so much that we can do, so much we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have an outside entity come in, they can do more. Yes. You know, and we reap the benefits as a teacher. We do. You know, we see the, the, the students excited about mm -hmm. learning. We see them thinking about their future, yeah. having a vision for their life. And, oh, you know, yes. the Bible says that um, our people... Uh, perish because of lack of knowledge mm -hmm. you know and then uh, not having a vision right you know the Bible says to write a vision make it plain so absolutely. if you don't have a vision yeah. and you haven't been exposed mm -hmm. that can hinder you absolutely you know that's how we start our uh, our mentor of the program at the beginning is they make vision boards good you know so we make sure that they they start that vision out and we help them throughout the years like okay well let's make it plain let's yes. see what we can do what, do, what yes. steps do we need to take to get yes. you to this to ensure that this vision happens and comes true for you. I so. love it. I love it. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. So um, I'd like to ask you approximately how many um, young men do you have in the program right now? We have 40 young men in the program. Oh, wow. I know, right? <laughs> uh, so our first year we finished with about 17. Okay. Um, and so with the just just putting it out there and you know like I said once they find out what the program is all about then everybody gets excited so we um, we have about 40 uh, that we that have been consistent and you know they show up and they work hard and we have 19 seniors who are going off to college okay you know one even is uh, going to the army Okay. Uh, when he finishes, they've all graduated high school. We were at all their graduations. Yes. And, uh, you know, they're grown now. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to just, you know, let them leave the nest and, and go on. And so uh, we're excited about that. And then we have another group of young men who um, will be entering into the program uh, okay. for next year. So, okay. and uh, the world will be able to see them at the gala as well. So okay. What's the age group? That. The, well, we start off with our um, young gents who are in grades um, fifth grade and they go through middle school in eighth grade mm -hmm. and then we also have our gents which are our seniors our older uh, young men who are um, high school seniors okay. uh, so we, we kind of take them at the, be the end of their 11th grade year mm -hmm. and then mentor them from then all the way through graduation okay. um, so this year we wanted to kind of do something a little bit differently just because um, when we, you know, realized in working with the seniors, we realized that, you know, they weren't as equipped as we probably would have liked them to be for she whatever reason. Uh, so we wanted to, you know, maybe push it back a little bit and start a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Maybe get them, you know, at the start of their 11th grade year versus the end of their 11th grade year. So we can have a little bit more time for them. Because, you know, as we're preparing for college, you, you know, you have, you, have to, earlier you have to start a little earlier. Yes. And senior year is, is a little too late to, to start working on things that mm -hmm. we need them some of the skills that we need them to have so yes. you know my scholarship presentation needs to be happening in 11th yes. grade versus 12th grade so this year we did add that that's good. to the program so that's that good. we can have a little bit more time to work with them so how can a young man apply to be a part of the program so a young man who wants to apply to be in the program um, there is an online application that is out uh, on Wufu um, it's a online app that they can access and you can uh, contact me at the Chauncey Glover Project Houston at gmail.com and I'll be glad to forward you the link or the paper application. We've also distributed applications to uh, many of the schools within uh, the greater Houston area. Okay. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we definitely reached out to those 10 schools in HISD that oh, were up, for, mm -hmm, yes. that were up for, uh, for closing and mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that that they had the opportunity to to get their boys uh, enrolled in the program yes, and so yes. you know we're excited about establishing those partnerships with those schools to have some young men from those schools join but you know the the online application went out to anybody who in across the city of Houston who may have been interested they don't necessarily have to be in HISD okay you know because it's needed everywhere. Yes. Not just within the yes. inner city, even though most of our partnerships are within the inner city, anybody is welcome to join the Chauncey Glover Project. So we do welcome them. 
So let me ask you, how can someone um, become a partner? For example, uh, maybe a, a person who owns a men's boutique or maybe a pastor. Absolutely. Or... We, uh, we would love, uh, we love company partnerships <laughs> okay. uh, because those, those are what keep us going. You know? So uh, again, please contact me at the Chauncey Glover Project Houston at gmail.com and um, make sure that you uh, introduce yourself so we can start that partnership. We are so blessed to to have had um, a partnership with The Breakfast Club okay. uh, this past year. Uh, Marcus Davis and yes. the staff over there Volunteer have shift. been um, amazing and feeding our boys all year long. And awesome. So they have been spoiled <laughs> on chicken and waffles. <laughs> and uh, so that is an amazing partnership. We thank our partnerships with Texas Southern University yes. and the Thurgood Marshall School of Law. They have been amazing with us this year. Houston and parks and recreation uh, have been working with us as well um, and you know also Wheatley High School, Westbury High School, the principals there have been amazing. They allow us to use their facilities when we beautiful. need to you know to meet with the, the young men and everything like that so we, we appreciate partnerships and we you know we welcome them and all because that's how it's a community you know it takes a village and that's how we can continue to, to do the work we can't do it alone. Amen, amen, we're definitely uh, we support you and you. so excited about what you're doing and we definitely wish you much more success and um, hopefully people will watch this television interview yes. and connect and partner so seeds into this type of program Absolutely. Um, so any last words that you'd like to share with someone that's watching right now just to all who are watching please join us on Friday June 22nd at the Hobby Center for our second annual black tie gala for the Chauncey Glover project the theme is there is a king in me tickets are available at the hobby center or you can contact us at the organization, the Chauncey Glover Project Houston at gmail.com, or you can call me at 832-558-1906, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have, but please come out and support our young men as they venture on to these next stages in their lives. Amen. Thank you, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, yes. You know what, people of God, remember that our youth is important. Remember that they are not a forgotten generation. Mm -hmm. People may want to use that term, but let's not embrace that term. Let's not forget our youth. Mm -hmm. Sow into them, sow positive words into their life and support organizations similar to this so that you can help make a difference in a child's life. Thank you so much for watching A Message of Hope. I pray your soul was inspired. Remember to follow me on all social media platforms. And for more information or inspiration, you can go to my website at www.christinalockett.com.